Oh. Hi. Um, we need to talk about economics a little today, because we're getting into the Depression and the New Deal. And, well, frankly, uh, in the past couple years, the concepts of depression have been on all of our minds. Um, now, your book explains the New Deal fairly well and explains the depths of depression. Uh, what I think is a little hard to get for some people is how we actually got into the Depression. What actually happened? Um, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. So, the idea is that the 1920s was just this period of amazing, amazing prosperity. Um, and it was the kind of thing where everybody was investing uh, businesses were expanding, they were expanding overseas, it seemed like you couldn't lose. In fact, frankly, in the 20s, if you invest in the stock market, you couldn't lose. People were just buying stock like crazy, snatching up everything they could get. Um, but everything you put in seemed to make a profit, because the, the market was rising so much. It got so much that People were doing something, and this was the big problem, called buying on margin. They would buy stock for about 10% down, and the broker would loan them the rest, essentially. Um, the idea was that you borrowed, uh, you made an investment, then once the stock rose high enough, you could sell it off, you could pay off the loan, and still make a profit. You didn't really have to have the money to buy the stock and people were willing to loan it to you because um, it was always rising. The problem with mine on margin, if the stock dropped, you owed the difference to the broker. The broker did not want to be out, so you owed the difference and he would call it in right away. Um, that means you have an entire system, an entire system built on credit, not built on actual money investment, not built on actual cash being put in, but built on this kind of fabricated credit system where nobody actually had the money to back it up. Is this sounding at all familiar? Yeah, well, it should, um, because this is the same, a similar problem to what we ran into. Um, okay, so as I said, this was working fine. Um, until the summer of 1929. Because in the summer of 1929, frankly, the stock market plateaued. It didn't drop, but it just wasn't rising. It wasn't getting any better. And everybody started to get a little nervous. They started to get a little scared. And by the end of the summer, people started selling. In October 1929, the stock market crashed. The value dropped by 83%. Which means all those people who borrowed on margin now owe this triggered the Great Depression. But, let's understand, it is not the cause. It is not the problem. This was just the trigger. The problem had to do with banks. Ironic, because our more recent problem has also directly had to do with banks. Um... The banking crisis was this. Um, essentially, in a bank, and it still works this way today, you put your money in on faith. You put your money into a bank on faith that if you come and ask them for it, they will give it back to you. They don't have the money. They don't keep the money there. Uh, the government requires them to keep 10% in their vault. And that's about all they carry. Sometimes they carry even less. Um, the rest, they put out in loan. Um, all right. Well, the problem is when the stock market crashes and everybody has to come up with this money all of a sudden to pay off their margin, um, they have to go and they have to withdraw their life savings or they have to take money out. Well, the banks are struggling all of a sudden. The, a lot of people, some just middle class people, but some large investment brokers, some of them are throwing themselves out the window, but others are coming to the bank, they're trying to withdraw all this money, and the banks can't keep up, they don't have that money in their vault. So what the banks have to do is they have to call in loans. 
Because when a bank gives you a loan, it technically has the right to call it in at any time and just say, look, you need to give me all the money now. Um, now, they can't request the full amount, but they can request most of it. Okay. Well, the problem is, when this happens, and these companies, or these individuals, have to pay these loans immediately, they end up going bankrupt. They end up going under. Um, and when they can't pay the loans, which they usually can't, um, I mean, people have, that's why people have long-term loans, because they can't pay them all right now. The banks will foreclose. So the banks foreclose on the companies. Now, all right. So the bank calls on the loan. The company closes. All the people are laid off. These people who are laid off need money. They go and they take more money out of the bank. Well, then the bank has to call in more loans. Then they foreclose on more people. Then more people get fired. Then these people go to the bank and get money. Are you seeing the pattern? It spirals downwards and downwards and downwards until at some point the banks can't call any more loans. They've called in all the loans. They foreclosed on everybody. Nobody else has money to give them. Um, and all they can do is close their doors. When a bank closes its doors, when a bank closes, everybody who has money in that bank has lost all their money. All these middle class people who had all their life savings in this bank have now lost it. It's not the fact that companies are closing, it's the fact that everybody's lost their life savings so nobody has anything to fall back on. Um, in three years, 5,000 banks close. And that process, tons of corporations, or companies, stores, Individuals are foreclosed upon. You can see how much of a problem this is. You can see where this is going to take people. Today, we have a safety net. It's called the FDIC. It's something that comes out of the New Deal. It's one of the most innovative reforms. In more recent crises, when the stock market dropped that fast and that far, People didn't rush the banks. Even now, people didn't, in the past couple of years, people didn't rush the banks because the government guaranteed your money for you. You can see how this happened. You can see how it's going to take people into bad places. Um, the New Deal helped us get out of it, though. So the World War II. Take a look at them. We'll pick up with this next one.